Pokemon Origins was just released recently in Japan, and it's set to come out in English on November 12th. But if you just can't wait to watch it, then you can easily look it up and watch it with English subtitles like I did. Basically what it is is a four-part special that retells the story of Pokemon Fire Red and Leaf Green. And to longtime fans like me that love to reminisce about the past games, you really don't want to miss this. So without further ado, here are my top five favorite Pokemon Origins moments. After losing his first battle against Green, Red gets some advice from Brock and decides to go challenge the Pewter City Gym Leader. To his surprise, Brock ends up being the Gym Leader. Brock looks pretty cool in his new getup, but shouldn't he be shirtless like in the original games? I guess his rock hard nipples were too much for our eyes to handle. Brock decides to have a battle with Red to teach him the different type advantages of Pokemon. The battle starts off with Red being a complete idiot and starting off with Charmander. Needless to say, it wasn't very effective. So, he finally understands that in order to win a Pokemon battle, you have to switch out different types of Pokemon. Unless you're playing the original Red version, Version, of course, where Psychic kills everything. So he uses Pokemon after Pokemon until he finally ends up defeating Brock, thanks to Metapod's string shot. Damn Metapod, that's one heck of a load! This was an amazingly intense battle, even I got into it just sitting there watching it. The perfect way to start off an incredible Pokemon special. Team Rocket in the older games are a lot more hardcore than the old anime makes them out to be. The leader, of course, as we all know, is Giovanni, who treats Pokemon as a way of business and power. In Pokemon Origins, he completely wrecks Red's team, and then flies off in his helicopter, like a boss. Red eventually makes his way to the final gym, and guess who's the final gym leader? Red has a little more experience this time, though, and tries to defeat Giovanni's Rhyhorn with a victory belt. Which technically should have worked, but you know, anime logic. During the battle, Giovanni remembers his past childhood memories, before Pokemon were only business and power to him. Which is what I really liked about this episode, it showed more depth into his character. He's not just some crazy bad guy trying to take over the world all the time. He has feelings and a past, just like everyone else. Eventually, Red defeats Giovanni, and Giovanni decides to close down Team Rocket. And it's all because Red reminded him that Pokemon were meant to be your friends, not abused for power. The very first battle in Origins is the classic battle of Red versus his rival, Green. But this time, things get a lot more intense, and it shows just how brutal a Pokemon battle can be. So if you ever wanted Pokemon to be real, you best be prepared for something like this to happen to one of your little friends. Damn, that Squirtle must have been pretty hungry! Charmander's screams of pain actually hurt me to listen to the very first time I was watching this. I wasn't expecting anything like that at all to happen. I thought, oh well, he'll just faint and have little googly eyes like in the old anime. But no, we get to hear Charmander scream like he's being killed. This was a crazy moment and I never thought we'd see anything like this in Pokemon. The final battle of Origins begins when Red thinks he's caught all the Pokemon, but unknowingly there was one more for him to catch. Number 150, Mewtwo, the strongest Pokemon in Kanto. So he sets off to Cerulean Cave past the Afro guy to begin his battle with Mewtwo. At first I was all like, is Mewtwo going to speak? But no, he just makes those screechy noises. Red starts off with my personal favorite Pokemon, Gengar, which isn't the wisest choice to go up against a Mewtwo, and you would think Red would know that by now, seeing as he's the Pokemon League champion and all, but no. After Gengar fails, he tries a legendary Pokemon of his own. He attempts to freeze Mewtwo, but with only a 10% chance of that happening, it fails and Articuno goes down as well. Finally, Red is down to his last Pokemon, Charizard. After trying to fight Mewtwo with all of his might, Charizard and Red both get knocked back into the water by Mewtwo's attack. Why Charizard doesn't die here is beyond me. But instead, Charizard gets to Mega Evolve into Charizard X, which goes against the game's original story and is a total plug for X and Y, but I'll let it pass because Charizard X looks totally badass. He manages to take down Mewtwo rather quickly afterwards and Red starts choking his balls. Finally, Mewtwo is captured, and Red becomes the number one Pokemon master in the world. Or is he? If you know me at all, then you should have totally seen this one coming. Lavender Town is the creepiest place in all of the Pokemon world, and in Origins, it shows why. When Red arrives, the town is in panic because Team Rocket had taken over the Pokemon Tower. No one could visit their departed Pokemon, and now even ghosts have been sighted. Even White Hand makes a cameo. After that, Red visits Mr. Fuji's house and learns about the orphaned Pokemon. 
We even get to hear about how Team Rocket killed the poor Cubone's mother, which was probably the saddest part in all of Origins. It even made me tear up watching it. Red goes into the Pokemon Tower and runs into the Ghost. It even yells its lines from the original games. Red then uses the Silscope to reveal that the Pokemon is actually the soul of Cubone's dead mother. Cubone senses his mother's soul and reunites with her in the Pokemon Tower, which rests her soul. It's a touching scene in Origins that all of us older fans can really appreciate. So, as a lifelong fan, I just wanted to say thank you, Nintendo, for making my childhood awesome. And for not forgetting about your older fans that are still out there to this day.